Well, Hillary Clinton this week holding her first press conference in 278 days. And after complaining for months about a lack of access, the media got its chance to ask her some tough questions. So reporters got tough, right? You suggested that there is a double standard. Do you think that you're treated differently in this race because you're a woman? <laughs> oh, boy. There is another one. To a different standard. And what does that mean for you going into the debates? All right, Mercedes. Now, reporters got seven <laughs> questions, and two of them were softballs like that. Maybe even some of the others were a bit soft as well. Is this more proof the mainstream media is being soft on Hillary? You know, I, I don't know if they're soft on her, but they're definitely scared of asking the tough questions. Uh, there's so much, and there's so much material, Eric, right now to ask about the Clinton Foundation and the, re the relationship with the State Department, uh, her convoluted responses on the email server and whether it's a heading or classified information or not. And, and there's so many unanswered questions that I think that these reporters are definitely, definitely giving her a very easy pass, while at the same time you're seeing a very different set of standards for Donald Trump, uh, where it is clearly, I think, for many in the mainstream media, that are it's it, it, they're basically focused on the destruction of, of Donald Trump. I, I'm going to take one, for example, Univision's Jorge Ramos, who comes out and basically says, isn't it our job to take on Donald Trump in this election? I mean, that's not what I would call unbiased journalism. Uh, uh, Kristen, can you imagine 278 days and your question is, uh, how are you treated differently than Donald Trump? I'm, it just blows me away. You finally have access. Ask the tough questions. Ask about the emails. Ask about the Clinton Foundation. Where's the money? The FBI. Why did you lie? And this is what she gets. I, I, I'm blown away. I think there are two things at play here. I think first, it's that you've got a lot of folks that know this is a very guarded candidate. They don't want to miss their shot, and they don't want to be cast out of the inner circle. And so if you're the kind of journalist who's asking questions that are really annoying, um, you know, do you risk losing that little access that you have? But I think the second thing that's really driving this is that a lot of these reporters, they're process junkies. They love stuff about who's fundraised what, what's the narrative, what's the message, um, rather than asking tough policy questions. And so they're buying bias is going to be, let's talk about the narrative and the standard you're being held to. I mean, you're the media. The media is holding the standard, right? But they're asking these process kind of meta questions because that is just the bubble in the world that you live in if you are a political journalist who's out on the campaign trail. And, yeah, and Jess, uh, earlier in the week, there was that, that uh, commander-in-chief forum, right. and Matt Lauer is being skewered for for yeah. pushing back a little bit on well, it Hillary wasn't a little, bit, a little bit, but on Donald I, Trump. I think that actually what happened the night before with Matt Lauer did inform what happened with the press conference. First of all, she was pressed about defining her stance about no ground troops, having them in Iraq and Syria, so that was serious. The double standard question one has been a pervasive one throughout this election, so I do actually think that it's important. Seven questions, baby steps. We'll get ten next time, then fifteen. I mean, this is really the first week that Hillary Clinton has been in full view for the press. So but, I think but, that. But, but I mean, just, but I think just, that that's I, important. I, I'm sorry. To interrupt, but, but no, Kristen no. makes a very good point that these these journalists are afraid to ask the tough questions because sure they might be excluded it. from the campaign. No, I, I, Where's the journalism there? I, I don't, I mean, I take Kristen's point. I hadn't thought about it that way. I, it is interesting, and I surely think that that's possible. But I do think that after what happened the night before, when Matt Lauer didn't even push back on Donald Trump's big lie, where he says he didn't support the Iraq War in 2002, where we know that he did, and you can check the Esquire article now, it's been updated I, for I, new I details. Gotta stop you again, you don't, though. because I he spent half, Matt Lauer spent well, half Jessica, of his questioning about it, the emails. It, so Jessica, to do it again Jessica, in the morning. Donald Trump was a private citizen. He didn't have access to. to military but intelligence because he's a make private an citizen it's okay for him to be a should. liar how's this hillary i don't care if hillary he supported clinton the war was, was informed yes she had access to all and the she information made a mistake. and she voted for the iraq war just because and people do this all the time they say that because donald trump was a private citizen that it excuses the fact that he tells lies it doesn't we it's are not, looking it, it, it is a lie he backed the war just just, 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 just let's just be honest here okay there's a no spin zone at eight o'clock every night during the week well i'll be back it's saturday morning no spin zone I'm Which not me, but, but, it's but just he the didn't. Truth. He's told Howard Stern, "Yeah, I guess I would go to war." And then immediately thereafter, during the but, war and after, he said, "This was yes. a bad idea." How is that a lie? Let me well, get let me get Gina in here. I'm sorry, you can respond. Gina will point out how it's a well, lie. Well, then you for can sure. respond to Gina. Go ahead, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I'll tell you, here's, here's another example of where it seems like ba basic math is a challenge to those trying to write the narrative in the mainstream media. And that is this. The reality is that they asked Donald Trump 16 questions, asked Hillary seven questions. If anything was uneven here, it was that Donald Trump was more interrogated than Hillary Clinton. The bottom line is Hillary doesn't want to talk about all of her lies, her scandal, her cover-up, uh, her bleach bit, the hammers she took to her phones. The list goes on and on all day long. She isn't available to media, and this is why. And even when she is, Eric, as you pointed out, she'll pick, handpick a small group. No, that, and, and, the press and, conference, and, and those they journalists were not They all know that their access is no, on the they, line. Where, and if you compare her, and if you compare her to Donald Trump, who is available every day. I can barely turn on my television without him I know, calling it's in some other isn't show. It? But it's access and it's you transparency. Know, it Let me bring Mercedes. Mercedes. And that's what this administration Wait, Donald Trump is the opposite of transparency. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Mercedes, media, I, the, the, can I just re remind everyone, sure. remember when Hillary Clinton said, yeah, press, you can come along for this ride, but you have to stay within this rope, and she literally roped off reporters? I mean, that's not transparency, and that's really not journalism, mercy. Well, and that's, I think, Clinton's biggest problem. The problem is a lack of transparency. But let me tell you, the media's job is to inform the American people, ask the tough questions. And I have to tell you, during that forum, one of those best questions that was asked by, was by that Navy veteran who said, mm -hmm. guess what? If I had, I have top secret clearance, and if I would have done half of what you would have done, I would have ended up in jail. And, and Hillary Clinton could not give a clarifying response to that man. And so I think that it, the media owes it to the American people to keep addressing, to keep revealing what is happening in each of the campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for Hillary Clinton, there's a lot of these unanswered questions. And yeah. I think, uh, I hope, I would like to see more of the American people being able to ask these questions directly to the Kristen, candidates. Kristen, we have 59 days or so left. Uh, do we see the, the, the American journalism reemerge uh, re as journalism, journalists? Well, I, I think what you are going to see is the Clinton campaign realizing they need to be a little bit more transparent, you know, playing really strong defense up until now. The polls have narrowed. She still has a lead, but it's not as big of a lead as she had two or three weeks ago. So she can't just sit back and run out the clock. Donald Trump, for all that people can criticize him, the one thing that he's done is he has been very available, very in the media, not holding back. Um, and so, you know, you'd have instances where, say, a terrorist attack happens right. and the Clinton campaign would be in their bunker, working Working on a statement, Trump would have already done three interviews in the media. Yeah, now, yeah maybe so you know. And so it's just a very different strategy. He only did two <laughs> instead of the third one. Exactly. Uh, we got to leave it right there. Come